Chilled Computer Guy here. Today we're in Bitwig Studio and we're going to talk about a modulator called the Sample and Hold. Now, when I first started making music on the computer and I first kind of started studying loosely modular synthesis, there was a parameter that always confused me and it was Sample and Hold. Um, sample and Hold is a modulator here in Bitwig Studio that is a little confusing and often misunderstood. Um, the thing that's very important to understand about sample and hold is if you apply it to a parameter, it's not going to do anything at all. Um, sample and hold is a modulator that must receive modulation in order to function. Now, you can modulate this with, uh, you know, a step mod, an envelope. In this case, we're going to use an LFO to modulate the sample and hold. Now, the device itself is very straightforward, very simple. You have an input control, a smooth control, and then basically a clock. Um, and then you can set this to free, meaning that it doesn't matter if you're hitting the key or not. It will stay in the same cycle. You can set it to a gate, meaning every time you hit a key, it's going to start. Or you can sync it to the uh, your project clock as well. Now, how this works is the input control is set to zero. So it's going to give you zero all the way to one, which is maxed out. And then it's going to go all the way to negative one. And then you can see uh, visually to the left uh, the level of as I turn the input control. Now... What the sample and hold is doing is it's going to sample the level of this input control every quarter note in this case, because I have this set to quarter notes. So I'm going to go ahead and modulate this input control with the LFO here. Okay, so you can see that the LFO is modulating that input control. Okay. Now, if you look at this LFO, I have it set to one bar. So basically this is a, it's cycling once per bar. Okay, if you go back to the sample and hold, you can see that the clock is set to quarter notes. So what it's doing is it's sampling this input level four times every one cycle of the LFO. So basically what the sample and hold is doing is it's sampling this input level every quarter note now, since the LFO is set to one bar, it's basically taking four samples of this input level. So as you can see visually, you see four different levels. So I'm going to go ahead and modulate the, uh, the center tone arm of the uh, organ here. And then as you can see, there's four different levels because it's sampling at every quarter note and the LFO is cycling every bar. So basically you're getting four different samples. So that's how sample and hold works. It's basically sampling the input level every quarter note or whatever you set this to. So you can see you can set this to 16th notes and now you're getting um, you're getting 16 samples per bar because the LFO is set to a bar. So since the LFO is set to a bar and this is set to 16th notes, you're taking 16 different samples of that input level. And as you can see on the left, and as displayed by the tone arm, you're getting 16 different levels there. So it's kind of like a, it looks like a staircase going up and down. So we've basically taken this triangle wave and we've kind of digitized it by giving it 16 steps. Now the smooth control is going to take this, this jaggedness and it's going to smooth it out. It's going to make it all linear and whatnot, you know, like a little Bezier or something like that, you know. So as I turn this up, you'll see that those steps get smoothed out. And then if we turn it up all the way, now it's just a smooth curve. And you can see that. And you can see that reflected in the tone arm there. So now you see a nice smooth movement up and down as opposed to if I turn this down, now it's a very jagged up and down. And so let's go ahead and uh, hit a key on here. I got a note latch on. I love the note latch. You just hit the middle C. And what the note latch will do is it'll hold that key down.
And so that's basically the sample and hold and how it works. Something you want to be careful about is when you do modulate the sample and hold, like let's say if I set my LFO to let's say a 16th note, let's say, or something, and then I uh, go back to my sample and hold, you can see my input level is, is going really quick here. But because it's going so fast and I'm set to quarter notes, it's basically phase canceling. Um, as soon as I move this though off that quarter note, now we're getting the difference. Okay, um, so the sample and hold actually works if you modulate it with an envelope or step mod, something that's a little slower. If you modulate it with a normal, like a LFO, um, you know, at a normal rate, like a 16th or, or an eighth or a quarter, what will happen is your LFO and your clock rate and your sample and hold, they'll basically, you know, it'll be phase cancellation basically. So we got quarter note LFO, but we have a quarter note sample. So obviously it's gonna be the same every time. But as soon as I slide this, off that quarter note, you'll get movement because now I've broken up the redundancy. Now I've disturbed that phase cancellation, so you're getting movement there. So something to be careful of if you if you notice that you are modulating with an LFO, but you're not getting any movement, it could be because you're you're phase canceling the uh, samples. It's basically sampling at the same rate as the LFO, or it's divisible. Um, by the same rate. Thus, for every time it takes a sample, it's at the same exact level, so you won't see any movement. So that's the sample and hold. That's how it works. It's a very, very useful uh, modulator. Um, you can get some pretty chaotic modulations out of it, but it's just another tool in your arsenal. Um, you know, learn all these modulators because some of them are a little confusing. The sample and hold is one of those confusing ones, but it's definitely worth learning because it's a valuable tool. You get some chaotic modulations, and it's just nice to know that you have this tool in your arsenal when it comes to modulation. Anyway, do remember that these lessons, these tutorials, they're not for beginners, they're not for experts, they're for everybody. All I'm trying to do is inspire you to work on music here in Bitwig Studio. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you want to see. If there's any questions you do have about Bitwig Studio, I'll try to do a video on it. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye now.